Good morning, I'm heading out to milk our family milk cow and wanted to take you along to show you our entire milking process from start to finish. I will say this takes me about 30 minutes all in all now. It has not always been that quick, so just keep that in mind if you're watching and kind of looking to see what all having a milk cow entails if you're looking at adding one to your homestead. Otherwise, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, the very first thing I do is grab a clean towel and put it in the milk bucket. I take that to the sink and start filling it up with hot water. Once that's full, I put the lid on and I like to set it by the front door while I get my coat and my boots on. And then it's time to head outside. The first thing I do is walk to the barn and fill up a bucket with some grain for Darla. We feed a sweet feed mix, cracked corn, and black oil sunflower seeds. Once I have that, I close the door and head on back to the pasture. Good morning, guys. So here you'll see me check on that water trough. I started filling that up earlier today. I set the grain bucket on the trailer, grab the halter, and get myself into the pasture. Our current locking situation is not the most ideal, but it gets the job done, so it's what we're working with for now. I head back to the shelter first and grab this pitchfork rake type of thing and start getting rid of all of the poop that has accumulated out there since yesterday. This doesn't take very long and saves me a tremendous amount of time when it comes to cleaning Darla before we start milking. So then I grab the halter and walk back up to the front to get her and bring her on back. Putting a halter on a cow with only one hand is definitely not one of the easiest things to do, but we got it on there. Honestly, she walks better with that chain than the halter anyway. The halter is mostly just so I can tie her um, up once we get out to the shelter. She was being rather stubborn for me today, although she does usually walk pretty well. She knows the drill, so she just comes right on in here and right into place. Here in a second, you'll see she was being funny in front of the camera this morning. Before she can be milked, she needs to be cleaned. The first step in that process is to brush off any loose dirt and debris that could potentially fall into the milk bucket. And then I take that clean rag out of the milk bucket, wring it out, and start wiping off all of her teats, just making sure that they are nice and clean, ready to go. Once that rag comes out of the milk bucket, it never goes back in there. If I do need to rinse it out, I just pour some water on it and wring it out as needed. Once she is nice and clean, I dump the remaining water out of that bucket, put the dirty rag in my pocket, pull out my dry rag from my pocket to wipe my hands off, and squirt out two to three squirts of milk from each teat before we start milking. That is because that milk has the highest bacteria content because it's technically been in there since the last milking. So it's best just to get rid of that before we put the bucket under there and start milking her. So thankfully today she wasn't very dirty. That is one of the good things about keeping up with keeping the shelter clean. If the shelter is dirty, she gets really dirty. And if she's dirty, just getting her cleaned and ready to milk can take longer than the actual milking does sometimes. So 
So the entire process today took me about 15 minutes from the time that I started cleaning her to the time I finished milking her. And just like that, we're all finished. So I pop the lid back on the bucket, get it out of the way, and then I will get Darla out of here. She, again, knows the drill. So as soon as I take her halter off, she's off and headed back up to the front with baby trailing right behind her. He's usually not too far away. I grab the halter and the milk bucket and meet them up at the front. I put the halter back on the H brace, and if I can get to the gate, I will get myself out of the pasture. This is their favorite part. I just tossed that grain into their feeder, and they love it. And then I take the bucket back up to the barn and head into the house. Once I get inside, the dogs know that it's time for them to go out. So I let them out, get the wet rag out of my pocket, kick my boots off, and hang my coat up. Then head to the kitchen to deal with the milk. All right, guys, we are back inside, done milking now. Um, the very first thing I do when I come in is wash my hands. And one of the best tips I ever heard was to wash your hands with not hot water when you first come back in, because hot water opens up your pores. So if just have like the scent of a cow on your hands, your pores are going to open up and just trap that smell in for the rest of the day. And I gotta say that is some of the best advice I've ever heard. So my hands are washed and then this is a one gallon pitcher. It was dirt cheap from Walmart, like maybe $1.50. And then this is a flower sack towel folded into, um, folded into fourths also from Walmart. They work really really well they dry really quickly after i strain milk with them and rinse them out which is part of the reason i like them um and i like that they're reusable so that is what we use to strain and i'll wash everything at the end so i just kind of sit it out of the way as i need to some people will strain their milk straight into whatever jars they're storing it in and i have tried that and truthfully it just seems really messy so I prefer to do it this way. It does take one extra step, but I feel like I spill way less milk this way. I don't really ever spill milk like this, but it seemed like I was constantly still filling milk, trying to get it into my glass half gallon jars. I just wash I typically just wash the inside of the milk bucket and the inside of the lid but sometimes the outside will need a good wash but for the most part I just wash the part where the milk is actually going to be touching so I usually give everything a good rinse first and then go in and wash it pretty Pretty self-explanatory, really. And then I also have a rag that I had out in the pasture to wipe the teats off, and I always rinse that off really, really well once I'm inside too. I rinse it off in the pasture, so that I don't have quite as much rinsing to do once I get inside, but. I feel like rinsing them out keeps them clean up for longer and just really lengthens the lifespan of all my towels. So I'll hang that up to dry in a few. The outside of this bucket is pretty dirty today. So. Just give it a quick, quick wash. 
much, nothing too crazy. And then I have a hook for that to hang on, but I let it sit beside the sink for at least the first couple minutes just to get the bulk of the water off. Um, and then I'll go hang it up. This is our milk and you can see there was a few pieces of like hay and dirt, but nothing too crazy. And then I, again, I just rinse that out. And I will say typically we get about a gallon of milk a day, but I milked her quite a bit earlier today than I have been the last few. So I only got about a half gallon, um, but that's pretty common if I go out a few hours earlier. I will still take it. And then these are glass half gallon jars and we got them in a six pack for I think $15 last year from Walmart, which is a heck of a deal for six of those. Um, and then we use the plastic reusable mason jar lids from Walmart and those are pretty cheap and easy to use. I will say the easiest way to mark on the lids is with the Sharpie, except for it is so hard to get it off. So you can use dry erase markers, but the problem with that then is it seems like they just wipe right off. So something in between would be perfect, but I haven't found what that is yet. And truthfully, we have been going through milk fast enough in the last few weeks that I haven't even been marking our jars. For now, that's what's working for us. We're just not marking it. And then I have this little bit left in my pitcher. And truthfully, I don't want to waste a whole half gallon jar for that. So I'm just going to use a little pint jar and then I'll just throw that in the fridge and drink it later. So we just use those, um, those same lids. Uh, we have them in the regular math size as well and truthfully they're so easy and so convenient especially like this when I have just a little bit extra milk because if you don't have a, a lid on it there's no way to shake it up after the cream and the milk separate later so I like to go ahead and put that on there and then it is just ready to go whenever I'm ready for a glass of milk later so let me sit I'll stuff there for a second I just rinse my pitcher. I wash everything once or twice a week. But truthfully, for no longer than our milk sits in there, I just rinse it out really, really well with hot water every day. And then it's usually good to go. Put that back in the cabinet. I'm going to go hang up our towels and get this milk in the fridge. And that's it. Right now we have our pellet stove on. So that is the best place for my rags to dry out. That part of our refrigerator, that little piece in the back, is probably the coldest part in our whole fridge. Sometimes things get too close to that, they will end up freezing. So I like to put our milk there. Some people like to chill it over ice. I don't think that's necessary. That spot usually does a perfectly fine job keeping our, getting our milk cold really quick and keeping it cold. So that's it. And then I just hang my bucket back up to finish drying. Thank you so much for coming along with me this morning to see our once a day milking process with our family milk cow. I hope that you enjoyed watching. If there's anything else that you want to see, leave me a comment down below or if you have any questions for me. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.